We're back. <laughs> Hi. Tech check round two. Before we even get back into it, uh, welcome back, everybody. And can you please let us know in the chat if you can see us okay? And by okay, I mean like, <laughs> and if you can hear us okay. And this is also very important. Please take part in our new poll. Please take part in the poll. <laughs> it's very important that you take part in the new poll. <laughs> We have, let's see, we have uh, 25 people in here okay. right now. So there's quite a few missing. So hopefully they find hopefully us. Hopefully they find us. I don't want to jump, I don't want to jump back in too quickly. Um, I guess I could I could say a little bit about what I may have. I don't know what was missed just before we the last one kind of where the sound started to go a bit funny. Um, um I but I, I was we'll, talking we'll wait, we'll wait a couple of minutes. Let's let let's let everyone find the stream. Okay. Um it's up oh, there we go it's starting to climb everybody's starting, yep, to, starting to, to pop in starting to find us marvelous uh this is round two take two hopefully our um we'll we'll take part in the poll so we know what to feed the squirrels so they stop interfering with, <laughs> with our technology <laughs> marvelous <laughs> Okay, well, as soon as um, you think we've pretty much got everybody. Yeah, back. well, we had almost three, 300 people watching, and we're at 123. So okay. it's almost half. Okay. So another maybe few, maybe a minute or two, and we'll get rolling. Okay. Someone had a great question earlier, too. And, they had uh, on me. Well, I forgot what it was. I was about to read it out to you. It was about just before everything went wonky. <laughs> Talk it about was about setup. something about, you know, um, Oh my goodness. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah, it'll come back to me. It's like telling me It was some it was Caroline. Caroline, one of our subscribers. Um she'll she, if if you hear me, Caroline, put it back in the chat. It's like it's like saying, Oh, I've got this great joke. I know like, you have a long list of the uh, stuff <laughs> there, but I thought it was um it was a good question based on what you what you're talking about. So All right. Well I'll tell you what. Um if it if Caroline thinks of it or if you remember what it was. Sounds like our sound is back to normal. Sounds like we're back to normal. Yep. Okay. And, and all right. I guess that was just a weird little. Yeah. So we almost of, have half. We almost have half of everyone. So we'll half. we'll get going. Okay. And let's then get going. Everyone right. else will have to find us after. So I'm going to get back to uh, just quickly. If this is the first stream you caught, we are just talking a little bit about some spring crochet inspiration, kind of how to keep yourself occupied and maybe, you know, other projects to sort of think about or get into as the weather turns warm. Um, and we are kind of taking a lot of our chat direction from the uh, sort of the, some of the topics that have been uppermost on the minds of some of our family members in recent days. And that we're, we're kind of wrapping that all together into a bit of a spring inspiration Thing. <laughs> so just to clarify, for those of long. you that are catching this video now, there is a part one. Yes, there's a part one. Uh, which will be a completely separate video with the yeah. same thumbnail. Yeah. And then this was part two. Yeah, just the live stream cut out. So we're going to try it again. But anyway, um, I was in the middle of a question from Quez about how to maintain inspiration to finish projects and also what to do with everything that you make. So uh, we were just sort of talking about... Um, Finishing things, so if you are having trouble finishing a project and it's something that you really have to finish, you really have to get it done, then um, doing it in little bite-sized pieces, so setting the timer for 15 minutes, only doing 15 minutes on it, and then running off and doing something else. Every every minute that you put into a project, that makes you that, that brings you that much closer to the end. So if it's a project that you have to finish because you, you have an agreement to do so or you just want to get it done, um, but you've lost interest in the project, then taking little bite-sized um, pieces of it, scheduling it in. I'm going to do 15 minutes after I finish the dishes. I'm going to do 15 minutes before I go to bed, something like that. Um, that can help, and it can actually get you to the end of the project without it feeling terribly onerous. Um, and putting on TV, uh, a show, a podcast, an audio book, uh, some YouTube, you know, uh, live streams, maybe some music in the background, that can kind of like something that kind of take you away from the repetitiveness of the project that's a nice way to kind of get some more work done on it too. Um, and if you don't have to finish it and you've lost interest in the project, don't feel bad about taking it apart, putting the yarn away and just getting on with something else. Um, 
you know, at the end of the day, crochet is supposed to be fun. It's a hobby. And if you aren't feeling happy and excited and joyful about a particular project, then there's no sense doing it if you don't have to. So take it apart. I do. And the second part of her question was, if you crochet a lot, and a lot of us do, what do you do with the accumulating pile of things that you make? And I love this question. Donations. <laughs> it's a great question because if you crochet for a long time or if you crochet a lot um, and it's just you're just doing it because you really love it, then, yeah, you will notice that, you know, spaces in your home are filling up with crochet goodies. Um, so I've got several answers to that. One, the make ahead stash. If you're just making stuff for the sake of making stuff because you like it, then you can put it in the make ahead stash. This is your bag, bucket, closet, shelf, cabinet, whatever, that you keep finished projects in that you then give away as gifts, you know, or if you want to donate something, you can always dive into your make ahead stash, pull out a project, um, some sort of little, little thing that maybe fits the, you know, it, maybe it's a nice gift topper, maybe it's a good gift all by itself, um, you know, if you are donating to a good cause or maybe a good cause is having a raffle and they're looking for donations for the raffle table, this is all good. Um, if you want to, to try your hand at selling, I mean, that's a very personal thing for everybody and it depends on what you're making. Um, but I mean, you can always do like a little, like if your local school has like a little crafts, craft fair or something in the fall and you've never really you know, done that kind of a thing, then renting a little table for the day at a, a school's craft show or a, or a church's craft show can be a lot of fun. And you don't, if you just want to unload the stuff because you want to just make room for, you know, the rest of your family members <laughs> that are feeling crowded out by all your crochet, or you just want to be able to make more room for the stuff you want to continue to crochet, then you don't have to worry about price points. Just make sure you're making back what you, you know, you would have spent on it for the, the, um, the materials. Uh, because that way, you know, people typically don't go to craft shows looking to spend big bucks on things. Um, and it's a nice way to let people buy some unique goodies, interact with your local neighbors in your community, and uh, free up space in your house by unloading stuff. Um, so that's an option too. Uh, but donations and gifts are my two chief, um, I guess, unload mechanisms <laughs> for all the stuff that tends to pile up around here. Um, and I, honestly, I tend to just make things that I like. Like if I know someone's having a baby, then fine. I'm making baby blankets or maybe I'm making baby socks or something. But most of the time I'm making something because I want it. Like I want that, you know, hair kerchief or I want that cute little, you know, crochet crop top or I want a new poncho or I want a new hat. So a lot of the times when I'm making things and we're doing tutorials here on the, the channel, it's for me. <laughs> so um, another good way to be able to keep your inspiration up is to get into a project that you want. So if you really want the finished object, whether it's a something as simple as a hat or something really elaborate, like a gorgeous wall hanging, um, if you really want it, it will also help carry you through the process of making it. Um, so that's hopefully some answers to, to Kiwes's questions. And Let me get to some sure. uh, membership milestones. I have a sip of my, my coffee, my, my water. I have to say, I'm not drinking coffee. We already had our it's already. The we already game. had our eight cups. Today. I want to be able to sleep tonight. We already had our eight cups. Um, big thank you to Claudia. Uh, this is a membership milestone. Hey, glad I could make it. Hello, everyone. Glad you could make it too. I'm glad we could make it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a uh, big thank you to Ashley, who is a, um, a renewing member. So a re-welcome to Ashley. And a uh, big thank you to Dizzy D, who Dizzy joined hey, welcome. our Vicuña level. Thank you, Dizzy D. Thank you, Dizzy D. Oh, just, for, uh, just to let everybody know, after the live stream, I will post... Um, the, uh, uh, I will post some stuff for the family. So anybody who's new or hasn't sort of like checked out the community tab in a while, we'll, we'll, we'll post a few things for the family afterwards. Um, just so we can kind of get everybody on the same page. I think I'd also like to post the two live streams together. So, uh, anyone, oh. anyone who missed the first one or second because of the confusion can, can get the both links yes. in, in one post. Yeah. You can find them both in one post. We yeah. can do that. Great so idea. We'll Mr. post Mr. that too, to all uh, the subscribers. Which should get everybody. Hopefully, yeah. Okay, great. Um, moving on. Let's see here. 
Kimberly was wondering about some new stitches for wraps and blankets. So learning new stitches, oh, love new stitches. Um, that kind of is, a, I figured I would kind of answer that in two basic simple parts. So if you guys, if any of you are new around here and you missed our calendar blanket project from 2018, I think it might've been 2018, we did something called the Victorian Stitch Sampler Blanket. And we learned 12 new and very different crochet stitch patterns. So these are stitch patterns which are great for multiple big projects. Blankets, wraps, um, maybe maybe shawls. I'm not so sure. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Not not the triangular type shawls, but like you know the the wider shawls, wraps, that kind of thing. Um, scarves, anything that's sort of simplistically square or uh, rectangular. Um, and yes, you can make really simple uh, ponchos and sweaters out of rectangular shapes. So you could theoretically use these stitches for a wearable project too. Uh, we have 12 of them. They're all, I think we've got the name Victorian Stitch Sampler in the title, um, but we will post that playlist in a uh, in the description box after this video has finished, um, just so you can find all 12 of them kind of in one place. But the thing I wanted to mention about those 12 stitches were that if you're looking for something, like we've got, we tried to cover the whole spectrum. So like thick and warm and wooly, like the waffle stitch, really lacy and fancy, like the ladies fan stitch, um, a really great blanket builder, the uh, the falling leaves or the little leaves pattern, depending on, on how you know it. I think some people know it as the blanket stitch. I don't know, like obviously stitch patterns end up getting a lot of names as they, as they um, evolve over the years because people kind of learn them and then go away. And now that we have the internet, all this information is kind of landing, landing on the internet and it's, you know, you're looking at like 200 years of crochet growing up in different parts of the world. So that's why sometimes things have a lot of, like the same thing will have multiple names and it can be a little confusing. Uh, but anyway, we tried to do a whole bunch of different stitches. So depending on the project you want to do, we should have a couple of stitches that will be nice for that kind of a project. And every single one of those stitch tutorials has the pattern notes in the description box. So if you're trying to find the description box on a video, if you're on a phone or a tablet, there's a little upside down arrow, looks like this, right directly underneath the video player. Click that and it opens up the description box. You can also tap on the title of the video and it should open the description box too. If you're on a computer or a laptop, um, usually the first sentence of the description box is sort of showing and those the little words that says read more or see more. Click on the words read more and the box will open and you'll find all that information in there. So if you are curious <clears throat> about how to apply a stitch multiplier for one of these patterns or any pattern you come across to a project, we also have a live stream. We actually uh, posted it earlier this week on the community tab. It's the stitches per inch live stream that we did a little while ago. And it basically tells you how to figure out using a measuring tape and the um, stitch multiplier how to figure out how many stitch or how many chains you need to start with in order to use a specific blanket pattern. So we've got all that information available for you if you are trying out some new stitches or you want to try out a new blanket project on your own. And we've got at least 12 there. Um, and we have we have a few, I think we have a few more too. We've got the straight granny stitch. Uh, we've got the corner to corner granny stitch. We've got a lot of different stitch patterns. So if you are looking for something different that you've never tried before, you might want to try those out. And take all of those stitch patterns and now change the weight and size, like the weight of your yarn and the size of your hook, and you'll get a completely different look. So, for example, in the Victorian stitch sampler, we use the old country breeches stitch. I love that stitch. It's so pretty. And it's so open. And it looks really nice in a blanket. looks really nice in a wrap. Then, I think later that summer, we did a um, old country bridges shawl using a size of one super lightweight yarn. It was the Summer Nights by Lion Brand and a very small hook. And of course that sizes down the stitch um, significantly and it just becomes the prettiest lace. So if you change the size of hook and yarn that you're using with a, with a, a stitch pattern, it can really change the look of the project that you're doing. Um, and that's fun to experiment with too. So. If you're, you know, thinking about going out on your own and you want to try your hand at making like a wrap or a blanket or even something small and simple like a, you know, 
um, a kerchief or something like that, um, or a headband. Um, I think Robin was saying that she's been making hairbands using all of the um, MMAM stitches. Super cool. Um, that's a great way to start. It's a nice way to do a little experimentation. It's a fun way to get comfortable with new stitches and, um, and learn about sort of how to use stitch multipliers. And that can really up your, up your experimentation game. So a lot of fun there. I would like to shout out Nick, who sent us a $5 super chat. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> Nick says, hey, guys, what would be a good stitch to use for a teen boy's scarf? For niece, I used tulip. The tulip stitch. A teen boy. Well, uh, whenever you're making something for someone, sorry, I'm just a little distracted. I see the cardinal in the tree and that always fills me with happiness. Um, <clears throat> Whenever you're making something for someone, it's good to know a few basic things about the person. Uh, for example, if you're going to make them a scarf, do they wear scarves? Would they prefer a cowl versus a scarf? Those are good questions to ask. Two, what are their favorite colors? Because people will sometimes accept uh, a lot of different stitch work if it's in a color they love. Um, <clears throat> three, is it something that you want to be warm or something that needs to be cool? I mean, does your nephew run hot? And especially if he's a teenage boy, I think a lot of them kind of run really warm. Um, and, and if he does like scarves um, and he does want it to be warm, then you will want to consider a warmer stitch, so something with less spaces than a cooler stitch, something with bigger spaces. Um, it really depends on his personality. You know, if he's like, if he really loves artistic stuff, you could probably do just about anything you want, so long as it's in a color that he likes. If he's a lot more sort of like traditional kind of like boy, <laughs> and he's not into anything too bright or colorful or lacy or artistic or anything like that, then just the simpler stitches, like the falling leaf stitch, I love that stitch. It's so pretty, but it's also very like, it's, it's a closed stitch. It's great for baby blankets. It's great for, for uh, fingerless gloves and it's amazing for scarves. And it's not something that I would say is terribly masculine or terribly feminine either. It's just a really beautiful closed stitch. Uh, so fall, when in doubt, I usually lean towards falling leaves because it's just a really nice, creates a really nice texture. And that's nice for anybody. Um, so that would be my pick. Uh, but if he's like, hey, you know, show me the artwork, then go nuts. <laughs> Making scarves is a lot of fun. They're usually simple, short projects. Um, and you can, we don't have to think too hard about scarves. They're also a really nice way to sort of showcase a pretty ball of self-striping yarn or a really neat stitch pattern. Scarves are cool. Anyway, um, so I hope that helped. I'm going to jump into... Okay, so Leslie asked about some warm weather project ideas, and Yvonne asked about little projects. She sort of said, you know, she likes little projects this time of year, and I like, I like to think about both. So warm weather projects, in my opinion, are things that use super lightweight yarn or crochet thread or the natural fibers like cotton, bamboo, blends, maybe even wool blends if it's a, if it's a, a lighter weight yarn. That way it's not too hot, it's not too, it doesn't make you itch or feel sweaty when you're working with it. And smaller projects, you don't want a great big blanket draped all over your lap if you're working in warm weather, unless you're in cold air conditioning, in which case, you know, you can do anything you want. Um, but warmer weather projects in my mind are decorative things, things for the garden and the patio, um, stuff that's celebratory for like barbecues, cute buntings, you know, little things like that appliques, coasters, doilies, um, uh, anything for the table. So any sort of table setting placemats, uh, table runners, um, circular centerpieces, tablecloths, if you've got the time and the inclination. Um, those are really great warm weather projects. Little tiny things like hair accessories, uh, kerchiefs, collars, um, socks, and of course, I know we probably don't really have, we're not necessarily in the mood for it right now, but in the warmer weather, like June, July, August, Christmas stuff. So a lot of Christmas things, um, ornaments for the tree, little present toppers, those are small, small little projects, um, dishcloths, 
anything that you would like, oh, you want to have a whole stack of those ready to go around the Christmas season, that is the time to make it. Um, it's they're small. They're not necessarily going to be hot. They don't take up a lot of time. They can be very mobile. I like I like small projects or mobile projects in the warm weather because you tend to kind of go out a little bit more. You might be in the car a little more. Maybe you're doing a little more visiting. You're on people's, you know, hanging out in people's backyards or the patios or whatever. Um, and it's nice to have a little something to take with you that's small. Um, you could always work on your granny squares. Um, those are a great scrap projects. So if you just sort of want to keep your fingers busy, then fill your bag full of scrap yarn and just make granny squares because granny squares have a gazillion different applications. Um, those are the kinds of things that I like to work on for the summer. So those are like, and those are lightweight projects or small projects. Little toys, now is a great time of year to work on little toys. Uh, and again, a lot of this stuff can be put into the make ahead stash. Um, you know, these are, I find we get really busy in the fall, winter, just kind of leading up to the, the holiday season. And you, that's when you want to do more crochet and typically when you don't have as much time to do crochet. So having things pre-made, your dishcloths, your doilies, your coasters, your uh, Christmas ornaments, your stocking stuffers, your little tiny stuffed toys, little bits of jewelry, accessories, having all of those done ahead of time. Um, can really help you when you need to reach for a gift last minute, especially if you forgot someone. <laughs> so that's the kind of stuff I like to do this time of year. Uh, jewelry. Jewelry is a fun thing to do. Um, and if you want to be engaged with crochet, you don't really feel like picking up your hooks. Maybe you've just had surgery. Maybe you're feeling, you know, some pain from an existing situation. Maybe you've been sick. You're tired. You just don't want to sit there and, and use a hook and, and have yarn all over the place. Now is also the best time of year to do some journaling. So if you haven't caught up your crochet project journaling, and it doesn't have to be super complicated, but now's a great time to do that. So take stock of all the projects you were doing over the winter, over the Christmas break. Um, if you've got photographs, print them off. Um, take scraps of yarn from the project, the pattern itself. Get your notes page um, and start sort of compiling your, your crochet project journal entry for that project. Um, I like to do a lot more of that this time of year because it's cool. I can sit at a desk and do it. I can sit outside and do it if I want to. It doesn't actually require me to do any real crochet. Or if I just want to work on little tiny, like, oh, I found 10 new crochet patterns, stitches, stitch patterns that I like. I want to just make a little sampler of each one. Like I'm just going to do, a, you know, no more than 10 stitches long by 10 rows deep. I just want to try a little sampler. I'm going to do it in, you know, a small lightweight yarn and a, like maybe crochet thread and a small hook just, just to do a little sampler. That goes into the crochet journal too. So nothing is wasted. Um, and that this is a good time to do that. I'm just going to practice a little, little pattern, you know, practice that little stitch. If you're the type of person who doesn't want to put in the time, even experimenting, unless you've got something useful at the end, dish claws. If you want to practice a new stitch, Make a dishcloth out of it. Use some cotton yarn, grab your five and a half millimeter hook, make a dishcloth. It can be a, a scrubby, it can be a dishcloth, washcloth. Um, and if you, it can, it, it'll look pretty because you're practicing a new stitch. You can give it away if you want, or you can just start using it right off the bat. And then no work is wasted. So I like to practice stitches into projects that are actually usable because then, you know, you don't feel like you've wasted your time. <laughs> Um, back to you. Um, we've got lots of people sharing their condolences to Cameron, who lost his great aunt. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, That's kind we, of a bummer. Yeah. Cameron is getting lots of love from the chat, That's which good. is nice. That's good. Wow. This community is awesome. So, <laughs> of course. This is an awesome community. <laughs> Um, yeah, Great. so I can't, Caroline, I don't think, it might have been Caroline, it may not have been Caroline that had that in it, um, so don't see it in the chat here. All right, well, no big deal. So you can work, continue working okay. through your notes. Um, we are uh, just shy of an hour. Just shy of an hour. If you put both streams together. Okay. So just let me know. Okay, great. All right, well, I just have a couple more. <laughs> Shell would like to see the poll results. Should we do the oh, poll Oh, yeah, I forgot all about the poll. All right, we'll, poll give everyone, we'll give everyone another 30 seconds or so. If you haven't seen the poll. In the poll. Make sure you take part in the poll, and then we will uh, get the results and see what... Uh, 
Okay. Boats came through. Um, well, in that case, you keep an eye on the pool, and I will just start into the next question. Uh, mm -hmm. Marilyn asked about spring color planning. So obviously, I could do an entire live stream on this because color planning. Ah, oh, color planning. It is one of my favorite parts about embarking on a new project. But for just some brief spring inspiration, I have a handful of little things to consider if you're trying to plan colors that are springy, summery for a project. So first and foremost, um, the colors that speak to you in the season. So in the spring, I like to think about, you know, baby colors, pastel colors, light colors, soft colors. In the summer, maybe they're a little... There, like, there's a couple couple kinds. You can have the really hot neons, like the really super brights, like the, the tropical colors. You can also have the really calm kind of like a, a day at the seashore, beachy tone colors. So, you know, colors that make you think of the season. That's a nice place to start. You don't have to start there, though. Um, if you're making something that's an accessory and you want it to go with an outfit, Go pick out that outfit, that jacket, that sweater, whatever it is that you're making it to match, um, a shirt, a blouse, a skirt, you know, if it's something lightweight, and go through your stash and compare the colors of yarn that you want to use to the product or the, the piece of clothing that you want to match it up with. So that's a good way to do a little color planning. And it doesn't necessarily have to be sort of spring or summer, but if it's made, made to match a spring or a summer outfit, that's the outfit you're going to use. And I would stick to the lighter weight yarns, the cottons, the natural blends if it's going to be worn in the summer. Um, you can also, if it's for decorative, like if it's a decorative piece you're making, maybe you want to make a blanket, maybe you want to make a pillow, something to freshen up the house, make it feel a little more bright and cheery. Um, nothing, there's nothing wrong with having throw blankets around in the spring and the summer because the evenings can be cool, especially if it's a rainy night. Now, it doesn't have to be a hot and heavy, like acrylic or a wool blanket. You can make blankets out of nice cotton, too. Uh, in fact, cotton blankets are wonderful because they're very breathable. And if you use really, really nice light colors, creams, whites, cheerful yellows, those are wonderful for the spring and the summer because they're bright and they're light and they lighten up a room, as if make, opposed to making it feel cozy and warm like the darker colors do. Um, but if you are very, you know, sort of picky about your decor, and you've got a specific color theme going on in a particular room, then you choose your fiber, spring, summer fibers, cottons, lightweight yarns, and choose colors that match your design scheme. So if you've got, you know, uh, a mostly white room, or you've got sort of like very neutral, let's say it's white with gray tones, or, you know, white with blue tones or something, you can always take the lighter shade of a color that you like to decorate with. So let's say you've got, um, let's say you've got a living room with a really rich rusty color on the walls because you really like that color at the time and it's really warm and it really suits the fall. But in the spring, you're like, eh, it doesn't feel very springy. It's not very bright. You can always take, um, you can use a neutral, like a white, a soft gray, a sand color, um, any of those neutrals are fine. Or you can take that color, say of the dark rust, and go up to the lightest version, which would maybe be a really soft <laughs> sorbet orange, but try to stay in the same shade category. Find that in a nice lightweight yarn, a nice cotton, make a blanket out of it, and it will lighten up the room. Uh, but when in doubt, go with white. White's the best for, for spring and summer. You okay, Mr. Sisters? <laughs> Getting trolled by Shell again. <laughs> Well, somebody had to do it. <laughs> um, okay, so would you like to hear the results yes, of the poll? Yes, I would like to hear the results. Of the so poll. the important poll of the day is what should we feed the squirrels to keep them off our internet wires? It's so true. And um, the winner is at 45%, anything they demand. <laughs> Very close second, Peanuts at 43%. They love those. And distant third, Hazelnuts, hazelnuts. at 10%. It's more the chipmunks that I think deserve the hazelnuts. The hazel, yeah, the chipmunks love the hazelnuts. Yes. Uh, but, uh, and they love the peanuts, too. They do. But and, the, and the sunflowers. And the sunflower seeds. And the uh, so, yeah, so we're going to have to go, uh, we're going to have to find out what they what they want, and we'll have to feed them that. So I don't know if they're going to have to leave out, like, uh, a survey, a form, an iPad. You know there. what you do? You take you take <laughs> one of everything, and you kind of lay them out they, and see what first. See what disappears first. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. 
So that was fun. Yes. Um, big thank you to Linda for the membership milestone. Hi, Hi from Scarborough, Maine, I believe. Scarborough, Maine. Uh, I enjoy watching your live streams and videos. Thank you. <laughs> and I like our live streams too when they work. <laughs> here's um, my favorite internet troll, Shell Shell. <laughs> Hi, Shell. Shell Shell sent us a members membership milestone. Thanks for all the info, Jada. No, My no. question is, how are you going to keep that chocolate bunny safe from the mister? Have a great weekend, everyone. It's going to be a nice weekend, show. I think we're going to share it because it's an awesome, really? gigantic rabbit. Aww, you're going to share it. You know what? I'm going to get it. You probably can't tell just how big it is on, on, on screen. I'm going to go get it. I'm going to, I'm going to run up and get that. that. <laughs> well, we have it in our video. I know. I know. <laughs> She's going to get the giant chocolate bunny, everyone. We should bust into that tonight. Oh, I want to see how big it is. I'm, I'm really curious. Everybody hear that? Okay. This is the biggest chocolate bunny I've ever seen. Bring it a little closer to the camera. Let's see. Yeah, Isn't look at that, that thing. Nice? Let's see it from the side. Uh huh. Isn't that cute? He's even got a bell. That is a fat bunny. That's the back. It's that, the biggest that, bunny I've ever it's seen. It's a double XL. It's a double XL. <laughs> double XL bunny. I also just love the packaging. It's one of the prettiest packages. It's got daisies and butterflies and it's all springy Whee! and it's gonna get devoured soon it's gonna get eaten i don't know how thick it is the woman the woman who sold it didn't know how thick the she walls said it she there. said it's it itself is it's hollow, hollow but it how, is pretty thick i just love that bell let's see let's hear it so nice pretty good bell. anyway biggest chocolate bunny i've ever seen so i had to have it <laughs> yes I think we're going to get into that this weekend. It was uh, we we had we had other we had some other chocolate uh, Easter candy that we were working our way through, but it's it's time to get which into the is completely bread, so. been devoured. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else, Mister Stitches? I have one more question. Uh, for everyone's us. enjoying the giant bunny. It's so pretty, it's so pretty, but it's the box too. Like I just. It's beautiful. It's uh, an Easter special. It's so nice. I love it. Love it. Okay. Ah, oh, all right. The other question we had here was from Carolyn, and she was looking for inf sort of inspiration for lightweight tops and t-shirt mm -hmm. appliques. You know what? Um, Susan says it's too cute to eat. So I know. Maybe we should take some real good close-up photos before we uh, yeah, I think we, we, we bust it up. <laughs> I might make a little a little Easter a little Easter display. Um, uh, um, uh, like, a, like I might include it somehow in a journal entry. Like I, you know, oh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't really journaled any of my, um, East, like my rabbit. I have a lot of we rabbit should journal patterns. The, the new, um, the new blanket, the new, uh, cross stitch blanket with some of the that bunny, changed. bunny, um, yeah, that's very Eastery. Uh, pocket pets. Yeah. That's, that's a, a great, idea. that's a great idea. Yeah. Craft, crafty weekend ahead. Um, okay. So let's did you want to wrap it up or yeah i've got i just want to address carolyn's question she was looking for inspiration on lightweight okay, tops me, and t-shirt appliques so let me let me sure. just shout out uh, linda a big thank you to linda who has uh, just joined our um hey, welcome, membership linda. thank you thank you um and we're all caught up with that so okay. you can go ahead great all right so inspiration for lightweight tops so this is this almost kind of um it ties in nicely to the to the question that um, Kimberly had about new stitches for wraps and blankets. Um, lightweight tops. We have a uh, a tutorial on a summer uh, cover up dress, um, and it's a it's a really it's a really simple that one in our in our uh, boho poncho are are two really easy. Uh, concepts for making a sort of lightweight loosey goosey top. So before you get into like really contoured stuff, if you are into that, fine. Um, but a lot of the same pretty stitch patterns that are in the, the Victorian stitch sampler would also work nicely for um, summery tops. We also have a crop top that just uses the B stitch, which is really nice. Um, you can have a lot of fun by changing color, 
you definitely want to go with a nice lightweight yarn. Like I'm thinking nothing heavier than a, than a four, but three and two weight category are probably better for the spring and summer and natural fibers like cotton, bamboo, silk, even um, cotton blends are fine. If you like have a cotton polyester blend, that's kind of nice too. Um, and just try to keep the, just try to keep your light, try to keep the yarn a lightweight because it, it will take a little longer to crochet. So the thinner and lighter weight your yarn is, of course, the more you have to make stitches in order to get up the, the sizing, but it looks nicer. It falls nicer. It ends up with a nicer drape. It just looks a little more like professional clothes. Um, so looking through like nice lacy open work stitch patterns, those are really nice for summer tops and they don't have to be complicated. They can just be, you know, even if you wear them over top of a tank top or something, it's just a little something to kind of a little something extra between you and, and the sun, let's say, but it doesn't have to be super contoured. That's the nice thing about the summer. Everything can be kind of easy breezy and loose. I love that. Um, and as far as Appliques for t-shirts. I love decorating jean jackets, t-shirts, pon ponchos, uh, sweatshirts, like um, hoodies with little appliques, uh, jean skirts even. Um, I love, actually, I really enjoy adding things to, to denim because denim is a really um, sturdy cotton and you can have a lot of fun stitching patches on the denim um, and the like, jeans and stuff and, and uh, jean, jean jackets. And uh, any... Any little image that you think is suitable. So if you're making it for someone or you're going for a theme, um, you want to you want to sort of look for uh, images that suit that applique, um, suit suit the, the the kind of the theme isn't the right word, but like the feeling that you're going for. So for example, if you are if you love toadstools. <laughs> like mushrooms and whatnot. We've got a really cute little uh, toadstool applique that we created for our folk art calendar blanket. We've actually got a ton of applique tutorials. Um, we have a whole playlist of those, in fact, and we'll link that in the description box as well when this video is done. Um, but that you can go and find, say, our little toadstool tutorial. And if you want, you can use um, crochet thread, like cotton crochet thread, or cotton embroidery floss. I love crocheting with embroidery floss. That is so much fun. And you can use a small, like a size two millimeter, one and a half millimeter if you can deal with it. And you can size down that little, you don't even have to change the, the anything about the pattern. You're just lightweight, like you're using really thin yarn or thread and you're using a small hook. And you can make these really cute little applique patches that you can then sew right onto like your denim jacket or your t-shirts. And it's good to use cotton, like uh, mercerized cotton thread or um, embroidery floss, because cotton washes well. It shouldn't shrink. And if you're putting it on denim, denim is cotton. And if you're putting it on T-shirts, T-shirts are usually cotton. Sometimes they're a cotton blend. So those fibers will be very similar. And they and if you're washing in cold water, nothing should shrink on you. <laughs> um, so that is a fun little way to take an applique, make it smaller and patch like sized. And then you can, you know, mm -hmm. make as many as you want. You can decorate. This is why I like to add them to denim, denim jackets because mm -hmm. it kind of makes it fun. Do you do the same thing with t-shirts? Um, Linda, one of our subscribers says, can we have a party when we reach half a million subscribers? Absolutely. We'll yeah, have a party for that. that's a great idea. We'll do a, we'll sure, do a, we'll do a live stream. Too. We'll do a live stream crochet party. We are kind of close. I mean, we're, you know, I feel like it's really slowed down. We know a lot of people watch us that aren't subscribed. Yes, so please subscribe. Yeah, so if you haven't <laughs> subscribed, then please do subscribe. Um, um, yeah, the majority, actually, of yeah. people that watch are unsubscribed. Yeah, they're like not subscribed. Yeah. So I, that could mean that you're, you know, you just, you weren't logged in at the time or you just don't have an account. Um, but uh, you have to have an account in order to subscribe. Obviously, having an account doesn't cost anything. So it's everyone that everyone that subscribed. watched our videos that subscribed, we would uh, we would we'd, we'd get to five hundred. We would get to five hundred thousand yeah. very quickly. We can have a party. <laughs> so uh, come on, everyone! It's a free account. Yeah, we should we should plan a little something special for five hundred thousand subscribers. Well, we, we're we eating that chocolate anything. tonight. That, so. That's 
Just that's We're just for now. after you take photos. That's for Friday. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know what? That would be a fun. I think that's a great idea. Ideas for the party. If we're going to have a, a, a sort of a special live stream party, um, and and probably a special tutorial too, I would think when we hit 500,000 subs, your suggestions would be much appreciated. Yeah, so, leave them in the comments. Yeah, leave them in the comments. Uh, leave them in the comments, not way, in the yeah, chat. Yeah, because we can. I can see that the they stay better. saved. Yeah. Sometimes the chat. Um, Sometimes it disappears. I've got it set to to replay, but I don't think it it doesn't always do it. You so also I think it depends the, on the device. The microphone set to work this evening and it didn't. Yes, so. that is true. <laughs> so I fumbled many things. Oh, I don't think that was you. I, I won't be fumbling that I'm chocolate bunny. Sure. Though. It's a um, uh, we have a really good question here from one of our channel members, Andrea. Andrea asks, what do you recommend for organizing yarn and supplies in a small university bedroom? Oh. I, I really struggle here at uni. Do you know what I did when I was at uni for all of my supplies? Um, I had a very tiny room in the attic of a very old dormitory, and I had wheelings. You know when you're, the ceiling does this? Well, it was they met at the top. That's, I had a really tiny little room. If I did this, I'd smack my head, and if I did this, I'd smack my head. It was enough room for a bed and a dresser and a desk. And there was a little tiny bit of space between the hot water radiator and my desk. So I used um, milk crates, plastic milk crates, and you can find milk crate style milk crates at the dollar store or similar squarish buckets. So you want cheap plastic stackable buckets. They don't even have to be drawers. I had mine stacked one, two, three, all on top of each other, but they were all kind of facing different directions. And I crammed them full of all my yarn. And I had, um, I think I had an old cleaned out pickle jar with all of my hooks. I still have that jar with all my hooks sitting in it, my crochet hooks and my knitting needles. Um, and I also had a lot of fabric because I did a lot of sewing one. And I had all my, my fabric neatly um, piled up in one of those crates. If you've got a bed, chances are you've got some space under the bed. If you went to uni with, with suitcases, you can store your um, some of your projects or your materials in your suitcases underneath your bed. I didn't even have a closet in my dorm room. There was there was it was there was no closet. There were, in fact there were even retrofitted pipes that we would hang like towels off to dry. <laughs> Boy, that place. Anyway, um, you can also if you do have a a, um, a closet. Um, wait, no, did I have a closet? You know, I don't remember. If you do have a closet, obviously, same thing. You can stack little low um, Rubbermaid containers. As Take measurements, though. So if you don't have anything yet, take measurements of the space that you want to maybe fit something into, um, like your closet or under the bed, how much clearance you have, um, or if you have, like, space along the wall or on a shelf, measure it, make notes, and then head off to the dollar store, maybe even, like, your local hardware store, and you're looking for... Not very expensive, very small, because uh, you want them to be light and stackable. You don't want anything heavy or big, because the bigger something is, the more you put in it, and often the heavier it gets. Um, and then make sure the key word is that it's stackable and small, so that you can slide them under the bed, you can stack them in the closet, you can stack them over like on a shelf, um, and you can stack them up and decorate with them too. So that's why I like the open crate look, because they're kind of cute. And if you like your, your craft supplies and they bring you a lot of excitement and happiness, then you kind of want to see what you have and you may as well just decorate with them. Um, and when you're on a budget, uh, the dollar store is your friend and anything, if you have a, a meal hall and they have like giant, you know, jars of things like jars of plastic jars or glass jars of things, go speak to the people that work in the meal hall and ask them if they have any, like what they're throwing out that day. Do they have any crates, boxes, um, any any wooden crates that like if they get lots of like produce they might get it in wooden crates the odd thing comes in wooden crates um pretty glass jars any big glass jars oversized glass jars that like like are full of like mayonnaise or pickles or something um they're yeah. funny they're funny but they're you know they're just going to go in the recycling so ask them ask them if they have anything empty that maybe you can use because 
If it's recyclable and you don't need it when you're moving out, you can always recycle it. But in the meantime, it's a really nice way to, you know, store a bunch of yarn, maybe your scraps, stuff like that. And you don't have to spend any money, uh, which is very important when you're on a budget. Did I shout out Linda? Uh, does that ring a bell, a, a new member? I think you did. But if you didn't, happy. Thank well, you. I'm re-shouting out <laughs> Linda. Happy, thank you. Welcome, Linda. <laughs> uh, uh, a big thank you for joining. I, I wasn't sure if I um, caught that membership post well uh, we did now so and marvelous uh, anyway I'll answer the question about about the the dorm room i'm trying to I'm just trying to, if i think of anything else before we finish i'll let you know but those are all fantastic <laughs> ideas milk crates mm -hmm. oh those are the best um i wanted to shout out cherry cherry sent us a five dollar super chat thank you cherry hello miss jada and general g i forgot to come back love your hair <laughs> also forgot my question oh. Oh, well. Those are my favorite questions, the forgotten ones. Thanks, I forgot. <laughs> uh, big shout out to Summer. Summer sent us a hey, Summer. membership milestone. <laughs> um, hey guys, just saying hi. Also, the member, uh, the member four is wrong. I I'm over three years total now, according I to know. the perks page. Yeah. So you're showing on our end as a Vicuña level at 37 months. I wonder. So that sounds about. It sounds that, about right. that's a, that um, sounds about three if you years. changed your I don't know it shouldn't it shouldn't affect how long you've been a member if you change your membership style no only if you if you, I think if you um if you change your tier uh, you're still connected yeah if you um if you stop your membership <laughs> then it will it, it I think it resets I think it does but yeah. I'm not I'm not sure we'd have to check with you too. oh uh, but oh, yeah, so it reads 37 months here. 37 months, yeah. okay. Yeah, so yeah, I think really that's correct. Concerned. About over uh, over three yeah. years. Yeah. Big thank you to big, Summer. Big thank you, Summer. I think Summer was one of our first members. Yeah, she was. I um I just had two more ideas for the dorm room. Sorry. <laughs> oh, you're really into this My dorm room. My brain is still thing, in the eh? dorm room. Um, you have a door, maybe have two if you have a closet, and um, things that hang over the top. Sometimes those doors don't don't close very well, <laughs> especially the closet door. <laughs> um, so you can you can buy things at the dollar store like shoe uh, shoe organizers, and you can stick stuff in there, or you can even make one if you've got extra yarn. You can just create one that hangs over the door on both sides. And big beautiful basket. We have a tutorial for big beautiful basket. Ah yes. And it is a oh, great scratch. We also user. have the tutorial for the the short rectangle one that will could slide under beds or under yes. chairs. Yes. Yeah. We actually have a lot of basket tutorials, as a matter of fact. Yeah. But, but the big beautiful basket and the baby beautiful basket are perfect for keeping materials like balls of yarn or smaller balls of yarn or really any materials in at all. Um, and if you've got them filled up first of all they're pretty secondly they're a great way to use up yarn that you're not so sure about um and you can mix all your colors together it doesn't matter what you're doing it, they, it always winds up looking really really good and um that's useful that basket can be used for just about anything and it's a nice way to decorate too so yeah a couple more ideas there <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I also would like to shout out Lala, who sent us a $2 super chat. Number, Thanks, Lala. Lala number two today. blanket. Great grandson born on Honey's B Day. Oh, congratulations. That is so great. Oh my gosh, a great grandson. Uh, a big welcome to Starla, who has joined our Hi, channel membership. Welcome. Welcome and thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and I think we're all caught up. Great. Okay, well. That was all of the uh, the question, sort of the spring inspo question stuff that we kind of came up with this week. So we hope in live stream number one and live stream number two this evening that we kind of covered something that, I don't know, helped you out, maybe gave you a little bit of a, a perk up, especially since we're heading into the weekend. Maybe if you were wondering about what to do or what to start in or how to finish something, you know, maybe we kind of covered something there for you. Um, and if you've got um, ideas for how we should celebrate our 500,000th subscriber, when yeah, get there, share them. Please let us know in the comment section down below. I'd love some suggestions. Um, it'd be fun to, to plan a special party, a special live stream party. I think it would be kind of neat to put some thought into that. I think we still have a little bit of time because we haven't, we haven't, we've sort of, like I said, the subscriptions have sort of slowed down. So, uh, 
If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. That will help us out. It'll certainly get us to the party a lot sooner. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's that. And once again, if you have questions about any of our tutorials, please feel free to leave the questions on the tutorial themselves in the comment section because we do go through comments at least once a week, sometimes a little more often than that. And uh, we try to answer as many as we can. If you are stuck on one of our patterns or something, please feel free to pop into our Etsy shop and message us. You don't have to have a, um, an account at, on the Etsy shop to uh, to message us. You just go to the, find our Etsy shop. Our, the link to our shop is uh, like all over our YouTube channel. It's on every single video we have. Um, and then when you get there, just, just click on contact owner and you can send us a message and it's private. So um, we can get that and, and, and um, help you out if you've got a question about one of our patterns. Um, if you wanna share photographs with us, you can also share photographs with us at our Etsy shop because in the, the message box, there's a little tiny icon in the top right corner that looks like a little miniature, like a cartoon landscape. If you tap on that or click on it, um, you can upload a photograph there. Um, and that's it. We hope you guys have an awesome weekend. We are hoping to get some nice weather here. Might get outside, take advantage of it. We'll see. Plan some more springy projects. Definitely eat some of this rabbit, if not. Woohoo! And, um, and if you missed our hook unboxing earlier today and you just want to throw something on to like have a bit of company while you're working on one of your projects, that's a good one. I actually, I brought them all down. We have the new hook unboxing. We've got uh, two, and the new, new two new hole. Susan Bates. Yeah, two new Susan Bates hooks, um, crow hooks, double ended ones. And nitpick rainbow wood a whole set of them and uh oh my gosh i just love these it is it's a little plastic package that they all come in um they're so pretty and these are so smooth i will probably be playing with my new hooks this weekend <laughs> That's what I'm they like. sound good they Me sound too. really they sound there's all this yeah <laughs> punk punk they, these ones are a bit bigger. I've got, I brought down the bigger ones to compare. Oh, them. wow, you brought the big ones. Because I've got, those are the, so this is the one I'm using for all the Tunisian, the Tunisian blanket, our totally Tunisian counter blanket. And it's, look how big it is compared yeah. to the new ones I got. Huge difference. Big, big difference, so. Wow. Yeah. Anyways, that is going to be a little bit of experimentation this weekend, I think. So that's what I'm up to. <laughs> anyway, thanks guys for hanging out. Uh, thanks for continuing to follow us to our second sort of live stream this evening. I'm not sure what happened to the sound, but. Good thing Mr. and Sitch has managed to fix it. Tried. We're going to go fix the uh, fix the squirrels. And, <laughs> and we're going to fix that chocolate bunny. And we're going to fix that chocolate bunny, too. So, um, so before we uh, close out, okay. I would like to shout out Katie, who sent us a membership milestone. Hey, Katie, you made it. Katie, Katie says, hi, doing better, not crocheting, kills me. Yes, take a break. <laughs> Get better first. <laughs> and a big thank you to Angela who sent us a super chat. Hi, Angela. Uh, I'm sorry, you. a membership milestone. Super, uh, a membership. Membership milestone. <laughs> Thanks, Angela. <laughs> uh, I have limited space in my home and love these ideas. Great, great. Oh, I'm glad that's helpful. Yeah, if you have a small space, you know, think, think small. Take measurements before you buy anything. It, it's otherwise you <laughs> spend money you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Um, membership milestone from Kathy. Hey, Kathy. Been a Silk member for 22 months. Wow, thank you. And Taz, one of our subscribers, thank says, you. Hello, guys. Have an awesome weekend. Run, 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 rabbit. Chocolate <laughs> rabbit. Run, run, rabbit. Yes, it's, it's going to... That rabbit better run. <laughs> of course, he's it, wearing a bell, so we'll know where he went. We'll know exactly where he goes. Or she. <laughs> oh, that rabbit's going to get it. I just love this thing. It you know what? It's so it's so nice looking. You it's almost so don't want to like, bust into it. I think I'm going to keep the box. Yeah, maybe gonna, you can put some of your I'm going your to yarn turn in there. the box into a craft, some kind of. <coughs> see, I like the windows in it, so yeah. I think I might turn it into some kind of diorama. Why not? Ah, like so a nice. diorama. I have I have some crafted plans, so we'll see we'll see where that takes us. But um, yeah. excellent. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do a few more membership milestones, sure, sure. and then we will wrap it up. And then we'll say goodnight. Uh, so big thank you to... Starla! 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 Actually, Starla's a new member yes. who, who just upgraded to Merino. Oh my goodness, well, thank you very much. Thank you, Starla. Appreciate that. <laughs> and a big thank you to Amanda. Hi, Amanda. 
membership milestone. I just got here. I'm sorry I missed it today. That's I was okay. at Michael's oh, well. sending hugs that's, that's fair. and spending money it's on yarn. I money. just added that. There's, there's two. There's two live streams. There's the one just before this and the one and this one too. So um, so don't miss the first one. Okay, time. everyone's hammering us now with membership <laughs> milestones. They're trying to keep you on the live stream, Jada. I know what's going on here. I know your tricks. It's fine. <laughs> um, so a big thank you to Becca, Becca. who uh, sent us a, a milestone. Thank you. Hi, Jada. It's Lucy. Lucy, yeah. Becca's the account name. Yes. I just got home, <clears throat> and I was so happy to see a live waiting for me, <laughs> going to eat dinner, and then start crocheting. Nice. Just so you know, today's live is in two yes. parts. Our live stream is in two parts. We will post them both, though. Don't worry. We're going to do some community posts. We're going to link them both. So, on a, on so you'll find everything yeah. in the community post, uh, the community have on the website, a little, our, <laughs> our YouTube channel a little later. So we'll, we'll, we'll get everybody up to speed. I think we are all are we caught good? up with okay. that. Thank you to everyone who participated yes. in the chat. Thanks and, for hanging um, out. This was great. Answered questions. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Yeah, marvelous. Uh, we have a wonderful crochet community here. The crochet community is amazing, but our community is like double XL amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Double XL chocolate bunny. Double XL. Guys, have a fantastic weekend. Stay safe. Stay crafty. We'll see you soon. And um, enjoy. Enjoy a little bit of spring, a little bit of spring inspiration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bye. Take care, everyone.